Yeah, so we have to start looking at that. I go in and uh, I work out five days a week, and I go in and do leg day. So I realize now that my hamstrings, quads, and everything else tighten up too much. And and, um, and if I go out hiking, there's quite a few places to hike here, here in Phoenix. So if I go out hiking, in a sense of, uh, it's more difficult for me to get rid of the lack of past. So I, okay, how do I do that? And since I go for leg day, so I have to go on the treadmill at an elevation a little bit, okay. walk aggressively and allow the muscles to, in a sense, release that lactic acid or in a sense of how do I work them differently? When I was younger, I had to do that. When I was younger, I could probably cycle um, 8,000 to 10,000 kilometers a year. Yes, I remember we talked about that on the last show. Yes, I remember the distances you were doing. Excellent, yes. Yes, so I remember that. I start realizing is that maybe I can't cycle anymore, but I can go into the gym and, and probably lift as, as much more weight than I did before when I was cycling. So... Be happy that you're able to look at things differently and do things differently. It's just like a relationship. An individual gets married and they think, well, you know, um, I know them pretty well. And I think, well, what's that going to be like in 20, 30 years? You're going to find out that you know that person different, more unique, more intensely, and with more respect, more honor. So it's... It, you're growing and evolving. It isn't the thought process where well, I used to do this, now I can't do this. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna shame and blame me. Why? It's 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 the same thing that in a relationship. Well, we used to eat this food. We used to go drink wine. We go hike, and we do all this. And we can't do that anymore. Okay, fine. I'm not going to blame anybody. So I think what you're saying is, what are you going to do instead? It doesn't mean you do nothing. You yeah, just do yeah. something different that you love to do still. So it's just changing the, the time that you're spending and what you're doing differently with it. Like, it's really funny. I, I've, I exercise quite early in the morning. I like to exercise any time of the day. My preference is morning and afternoon versus the night I will exercise at night if that's my only given option that day but my preference really is around seven to nine o'clock in the morning um, now many many years ago when I was training for different events I would be in the gym at 5 a.m hmm. and even now I say to people no no you won't see me in here ever at 5 a.m you'll see me at seven and I know it seems like a two-hour window but that's a big window for me because I want to be asleep at 5 a.m. still and I get up at 6 and get to the gym at 7 or, or even 8 or whatever it is. But, you know, when you say about how things are different as you get along the years, you're really grateful that you've got the fitness level. I know some people would still say that 7 a.m. Is, is too early for them. But back in the day, I would be in there at 5 and 6 and think, that the, where is everybody? Who? How come people are still in bed? Like, this is, let's get going. This, this you know... What do you mean people are coming in at 11 o'clock? That's the afternoon, you know. But as I've got older, I really valued that, that extra couple of hours where I've gone, no, I don't want to be in there at five. I'm not getting out of bed at four o'clock like I have before and got places at five. I'm going to keep that. But it doesn't mean I gave up doing fitness at a high level. It just means I changed something differently. Instead of saying, well, I used to do it like this, I'm going to do it like this. Um, you're right. It doesn't mean that we give up on our fitness level as we age, I think it would do something different to keep that fitness level high. And one thing that I have, and it's interesting that you say this so much tonight, is I have gratitude for being able to be doing exercise still. You know, when you say that, you know, you look around the gym and we look at different people in the gym that we're exercising with, that we clearly have an advantage just in the fact that we're more physically able than they are in certain ways. You know, there's lots of people that go to my gym that have you know, walking sticks to aid them around the gym. But they're in the gym, you know, and they've got a cane to help them to the next thing. And they're doing what they can on that. And here we get frustrated if there's a treadmill that we want to get on and somebody's running on it. You know, we're like, oh, we've got to go on the other one. You know, so 
really one thing that it's, it's such a good point that you're bringing up tonight that I really want people to take away with them as well is that we're really lucky to be able to do what exercise we're doing at that high level of what we're able to do. Like, what are we able to do at that point? And it could be anything, as long as it's something. As long yeah. as it's something. And I think that's a good concept that we've got to get out to people today. Just do it's, something. It's realizing if you're in the gym, if you're walking, hiking, whatever else, biking or whatever, and you're doing something aerobic or anaerobic, yeah. it's, it's realizing that you're, you're, you're breaking the muscles down. You're using the muscles. And it's, it's 20% activity. It's 80% and it's on you feeding the body back to rebuild those muscles. It's nutrition, what you're putting in the body. There's marathoners that go out and run 60, 50, 100 miles and lose a half a pound. Yes. So it's, it's realizing that you, you have to allow the body to fix, repair, and recover itself. And that's where nutrition comes in. So for someone who's not living a lifestyle with great nutrition, Ed, what advice would you give them to start? You know, say they, they know their nutrition is in a mess because they don't feel good, they're not looking as they would like, their energy level is low. They also go in with the controversy of what people are saying. Oh, you're going to get and be into the gym too much now. A lot of the times, people are still listening to their families and friends, and they want to go a certain way of a lifestyle, and they haven't been that way before. You're not often getting that support from people because they think, oh, you're going to be a fitness freak now, and that's it. you're going to get into all the fitness and be arrogant and be a peacock in the gym and just flutter around everywhere. And it doesn't necessarily mean that. It means that you're taking a lot more when people have said the word vanity to me before, or oh, people in the gym are so vain, Sarah, how do, you like, how do you call that your happy place? How do you love that environment? Because a lot of people that know me well see past my appearance and say, yeah, we know you may look a little vain. And I say to them, no, it's not vanity. It's personal pride. I always say it's personal pride. We've just got pride in our personal um, health and how we are and how we feel. So someone's starting out and they, they know they've got poor nutrition what would you think would be a good thing to get them around the supermarket with a better frame of mind get them against those naysayers that say oh you'll do that for a week but deep down they want to do it for life how do you get them on track basically i i find out what what's your what's your end goal a lot of people say that okay they want to lose the weight that's not it what do you want to lose the weight for yeah well, um, I, I got my granddaughters coming up for the wedding, and I want to be able to dance her wedding. Or that I want to be able to interact with my grandchildren and pick up the toys off the floor without passing out. Yeah, something simple every day like that, yeah. So that has a bigger tendency. It's like your... Um, New Year's goals in the sense of not necessarily losing the weight, being more fit or what. What's your end result? What do you want to do with this fit body? What do you want? Do, do you want a better relationship? Do you want to better interact with people in, in uh, a work environment? Do you want to better participate with individuals that maybe want to go out and feed the homeless? So I always look for that that. Not the first goal that they that what's the end goal? And it says, why did the motivation? Tell me your vision. Why, why? This is this is going to inspire you to maybe lose the weight, have more flexibility, um, get out and, and exercise one, two, three days a week, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. Because you're more apt to do it. Because for someone else, once you start reaching that, you can you know, interact with your grandchildren. You're you're having a better relationship with your spouse. You're able to maybe. Um, geez, uh, I'm 65 years old and I've never been horseback riding. I I think I'd like to try. Okay. So it's it's looking at in a sense what what that what weight is, loss would do for you if it happened. Yeah, yes. 
what, what's that relational thing? Uh, a lot of individuals say, well, um, I'd like to be around for a long time. And um, I have a, a lot of places that I'd like to visit. But I started realizing, I went online and, and found out that a lot of places don't have wheelchair access. And I'm afraid of that. Ah, so limitations from that type, that side of things then. Yes. Okay. Once we start putting the pieces together, and the set, this is more motivating than just losing the weight because I'm doing it for an end goal, an end purpose. Because then, in a sense, I'm serving others while I'm doing it. No, that's good. And again, the concept, you make us think so differently than saying, well, I want to lose weight to be fit. And we go, oh, okay, that's a great idea. Let's go. But where are we going? Like you just gave so many examples there of different things that, you know, again, lots of people, even older people say to me in their 80s, oh, why do you want to live till you're 100? And I'm like, you're already in your 80s. You're lucky. You're, you know, you're still here. You're, you're up there. And, you know, so for me, when people say, why do you want to live till you're that old? And I said, because there's lots more for me to see. And I'm a little bit nosy and I want to see what else is going to be happening around here. I want to keep seeing the progression of things and seeing what happens. I know there's a lot of bad things that happen in the world and people say to me, do you want to keep seeing all this sadness and this badness that's going on, Sarah? And I'm saying it's not that. I think there's a lot of good in the world that we can see still. It's not all about the sad side of things. There's lots of wonderful things that are happening that I don't want to miss. So the longer I'm here, the more I can see. So instead of just saying, I want to live till I'm 100 because, well, I'd like to live a long life. Well, I've got my whys to why I want to do that. Because I want to see more, I want to meet more people. I want to travel to more places. I want to see how the outcome is for different people that I have in my life now as they grow and, and, and grow into adults and see different things. I want to see what they're going to do and what they tell me from kids. You know, I have, I have a big um, involvement in the school district where I live. So I know so many children and now they're teenagers like I knew these kinders, and now they're 15, asking me about my lipstick colour I'm wearing and the blush I've got on. And I remember when they were in kinder, and I'm like, oh, well, actually, the colour is, you know. So I've even seen people in the last 10 years progress from little girls to young ladies who have got goals in their life. Just something simple like that. I want to see where they go for all these years. So that's why I want to live a long life. So I want, there's a lot more that I want to see. And you've really made us think tonight about that different concept of things i like that this show has been a bit different to maybe the motivational show of the new year that a lot of other people are doing you've really opened our mind up way bigger to more thinking about how we should deal with the situation or could deal with the situation and i think that's from your you know mature years of knowing how things have worked the gratitude of still being here and the love that you feel from your family and friends and the interaction that you have um and like I say, the, just the small things that you say have a big Im impact. So, you know, Ed, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I mean, I've really enjoyed the show. I know everybody else would be listening. If we want to be in touch with Ed, I know Fuzzy Manning. I should call you Fuzzy because you asked me to call you Fuzzy Manning. Uh, and I keep calling you Ed. Um, how can we get a hold of you? I know in our post that we've got here online, um, it's got all of your details. But if anyone wants to get a hold of you and, and work with you and connect with you and Susie, how can they get a hold of you? Basically, they can just uh, email me at, at fuzzymanning at gmail.com. Um, catch me on Facebook. Uh, I'm on there quite a bit. Yes, you are. Good, good. Yeah, I live there. But it's, um, it's, it's just making the connection and just um, getting on social media and just Googling, you know, fuzzy. You know, uh, there aren't too many of us. Yep. That was so good when I looked on Skype for you because there were so many Ed Mannings and then I thought, oh, it should be Fuzzy Manning and then it was, so it's good. And, and it's realizing that what you said about, you know, getting old and really realizing, you know, uh, the value and everything else. I love it because as we get older, we have a, a, a two-edged sword. We can contribute to so many other people's lives and they can contribute to ours. Yeah. I don't want to miss any. The same thing that you were saying. Yeah. There's so much to see and be involved, and I don't want to miss a thing. So that's why I show gratitude for still being here, and whatever we're able to achieve at whatever level we're at, I want to keep going with that. 
So thank you, Ed. I am going to have you on the show again. I know I am because I so enjoy these shows that I have with you. I mean, you really engage me in what I'm saying.